Welcome to our homestead and we're inside of our solar control room and we're going to be talking about batteries today. Specifically, the EGIL or EG4s or Life Powers from Signature Solar. And we're also going to be showing you how to assemble the racking system that comes with them because they are a server rack style battery, which is really convenient and cool. And we're going to talk about the features of this rack, which is really nice. So let's get going. So before we start talking about these batteries and all of the features that's contained within them and the extreme value that they are, I'm going to talk about the rack and how to put the rack together. And I want to do that because I think the rack is important to have. These batteries are heavy. You can stack them on top of each other or tilt them up, but this rack keeps everything super nice and neat and it's got built-in bus bars. Okay, let's put this thing together for you. Okay, it comes with all this hardware here, including some extra battery cable and some lugs, which is really nice to have. But in looking through the whole box, there's one glaring thing missing, and that's an instruction manual. So I guess you can use this video to reference how to put this thing together, and I'll figure it out for you. Although I'm sure it's not rocket science. So I did mention in the past that Signature Solar is very helpful when it comes to things like this. They will email you, if you call them, they'll email you a series of instructional pictures showing you how to put this together. But if you just watch this video, we'll get everything done for you. Let me bring you in closer to show you each piece. Okay, let's start with the cross brace. You can see the frame here has a lot of different holes in it, and that uh, is gonna line up with the holes if you put this the proper cross brace in each corner. So this one, you can see, you can get four screws in it. I have yet to do another one. You can get four over here, and then you have to move this middle screw out on each side on the top, and you can get four in that side. They have some corner bracing, which is great. That will uh, make the whole thing very rigid. Now there's just four of them. They go on the bottom, and you can tell the bottom because this lip right here for the shelf, this is the one that's on the bottom. So you want the screws up and the, the flange down, I guess you could say. So the kit comes with actually concrete anchors. Uh, uh, you can see this is not concrete, so I have no need of these, but I wish this big, huge, heavy battery case with these massive, huge batteries in it came with casters so I could roll it around. Um, I'm going to try to utilize these holes on the bottom to put a caster on. I think that's maybe what they're there for. This larger hole is for the concrete anchor, but maybe these smaller holes are for casters. So I wish it came with that for the price. So that's going to go in the corner. Same thing with the other one. And then we've got some center, some middle braces here, which will go and they will sit like that. Now this cross brace over here has a little notch out and that is so that it fits properly. This one goes in this corner right here. You can see it fit just like that. So if you have them flipped around or you have the incorrect cross brace, it's obviously, obviously not gonna fit on there. Now we also have these little L brackets here, but I'm not sure where they go. They have the same hole size or the same hole as the corner brackets. So that is for another concrete anchor, but they'll sit down lower than the other corner bracket, which is weird. And this is the only way I can think of to put it on. It's not gonna really go any other place. Okay, here's some tips for the assembly of this. Now, I like it because it's built like a tank. I like the integrated bars uh, and all that, but it's not very precisely made. So maybe in the future, they can find one that's a little better uh, made than this. The holes don't line up very well and I move these around to each of the corners and manipulated all of them to make sure that the holes would align and I couldn't do it. So I had to use a crescent wrench and actually twist. Two of these were twisted. So I would put a screw in one place and then the screws on the other little bracket so it wouldn't line up. So I had to twist it and align it. So that's a tip, use a crescent wrench to do that. Also, I had put these on earlier. Don't do that uh, because you need to manipulate these so much to get them on there that they were just in the way. So I had to take them back off again. Save these for the end. Actually, the easiest thing to put on first are the center brackets or the, the center um, supports here. 
on the top and the bottom. That will give you some rigidity to the whole structure and give you the ability to get these in. Now I recommend putting in one screw on each of these little connection points before you put in all the other screws. Now I was a bit disappointed there's no top to this and there's no front door. On the old Gill batteries, I believe they had a cabinet that had a door and a top with rubber grommets for your battery cables to come out. So hopefully they can source a different cabinet in the future. I'm probably going to fabricate a little door to go over the front and it's easy to put a top on it, obviously. Okay, let's get over and talk about these awesome batteries, all their features, and then we are going to put them in our rack here and connect them to our inverter. So we're back after a few days off for Christmas. We've got our battery in our rack, our first battery here. We're gonna power this one up and talk all about these amazing batteries, these Ego batteries from Signature Solar. These screws that came with the rack are to secure the battery to the rack. So make sure you use them. Now this is the EG4LL model, which is the professional model. It's $250 more than the regular model, but what you get with it is this LCD readout screen, which is really important for understanding, understanding battery health. It's got a lot of information on it that you need to know about your batteries. So I just switched it on. It's telling me the state of charge, the current, the temperature, and the voltage on it. And I know it will tell me what, uh, or how many cycles it's gone through as well. And that's a great place to start when talking about these batteries. These are lithium iron phosphate batteries. Uh, that's the chemistry in them, and they are rated for 7,000 cycles at 80% depth of discharge. So if you do the math on that, that's running them down from topped off to zero every single day for 15 years. And what's unbelievable about this battery and what Signature Solar offers with this battery, the LL model, is it has a 10-year warranty. That's incredibly long for a battery, and... I'm really impressed with the build quality. Now, I'm not gonna tear it apart because that'll void my warranty. I paid money, my money for these. You can go look at Will Prouse's channel. He does a full tear down, or partial tear down of the battery and gets into the build quality of it. And as of a few months ago, he has not found a battery out there on the market that is this quality with the build quality of it for the price that it is. So right now, Signature Solar has these in stock and I would get my hands on them quick because they sell out super fast. The last, the old batteries, the regular Gill batteries that they had sold out and they were out of stock for a long time because they were so high quality, people just ate them up. So I know for a fact they have about 500 left in stock. At least that was about five days ago when I was up there in the warehouse visiting with them. And I bought two extra ones while I was there. So I'd originally ordered three and I got two more because they go so fast. So head below the video and click on our affiliate link for Signature Solar. It'll take you right to their website. And along with every battery, you're going to get some paralleling cables and a communication cable. Now on this battery, you've got two positive and negative battery terminals. So that makes it really convenient to connect and parallel all the other batteries and connect them to the bus bars and get them up to your inverters with just one cable. You've got your programming dip switches here, and we'll talk about that in a second. You've got your communication ports right here, CAN bus and RS-485, and it's recommended that you use the RS-485 with these batteries and the grow watt inverters. I've heard CAN bus is really difficult to try to get hooked up. We've got our battery communication ports. We've got this on and off switch, but you can also use this 125 amp breaker right here, which is really nice it's built into the battery um, and something else that's built in the battery is a pre-charge resistor so you don't have to go out and buy another resistor you all you have to do is hook this straight up to an inverter with no problem so what's really cool is all of these features that you would normally buy separate for other batteries are incorporated into this and of course it's got a high quality bms in it which communicates obviously really well with the grow watt inverters because those are both sold by signature solar they're made to go together 
even though these will work with other inverters, obviously. So the really important feature of having that temp sensor in the readout here on the LCD screen is these batteries will discharge down to zero degrees, but they will only charge down to 32 degrees. So you need to maintain a nice, cool, um, not super humid temperature in the space that you're putting them. And I believe the high temperature is 131 degrees. So uh, James from Signature Solar says, don't put them in a shed outside uh, with no air conditioning in Arizona or Nevada. That's quite obvious, or Texas either, obviously. And then don't put them in a shed that's not heated up in Alaska in the winter time. They won't work. So make sure you just stay within those parameters and you'll be good. Okay, here's another really cool thing. You can parallel 16. That's right. 16 of these batteries. I mean, this rack only holds six. I only bought five. You can go up to 16 batteries in parallel with these uh, Ego batteries, which is unbelievable. That is a ton of off-grid battery power. Okay, let's stop chatting about the battery and hook it up. I have to make some battery cables. I don't have any lugs on these yet. So I have to do that, and then we're gonna hook one up to the inverter and fire it up. So this is a large gauge crimper that I purchased. It's the same one uh, Will Prowse recommends. I'll put the link to it in the description below. And then this is also a large gauge wire stripper. So both of these will be down there and you're gonna need these if you're going to put your own lugs on your batteries. We've got that stripped off. We're gonna put our lug on there like that. Put it inside the crimper just like that. You're going to need something strong to be able to crimp this. You're gonna need, like I use an old railroad tie, you can use obviously the back end of a vise, or we've got in here a 25 pound dumbbell, solid steel dumbbell, and we're gonna hit this pretty hard several times in two different places to get it to crimp on to our battery wires. And then this little kit that I bought here, which I'll also have in the description below, comes with the heat shrink, which is really nice to make these a little more secure and a little nicer. Just grab yourself any heat gun and fire it up. Well, there you go. Make sure it's snug and secure after you crimp it, of course. I didn't show that, but make sure you pull on it and it's secure, and then we can connect it to our batteries and then to the inverter. So as you can see, I put another battery into the rack, and that's for a reason. I only wanted one before, but it's an, for an important reason that's covered in the manual. And that is when you're checking the initial voltage of your batteries that you got delivered, some of them might be different from each other, depending on how new they are. So it's really important that if you're paralleling them together, that they are within a tenth of a volt of each other. So on these EG4LL batteries, your LCD readout is going to tell you what the current voltage is. If you don't have the one with the LCD readout, you can check them all with a voltmeter. And if they are not charged, then you're going to need to charge them somehow. For us, we purchased the 48 volt, 25 amp charger from Signature Solar that is compatible with these EG4LL batteries. So this is dual purpose. Not only is that going to help us on our initial setup, but this is gonna be used just in case our panels go down or we don't have sun for like a week straight so we can charge our batteries. And I'm gonna be doing a future video on this. So as I turn these on and I'm checking the voltage on our readouts here, we've got 52.7 volts for this battery on the top. I'm gonna to turn that back off because I don't want it on if I'm checking the other battery, especially because they're already hooked up. You can, try, you can check them individually if you haven't had them all hooked up yet. This one is 52.7 also. Now what's nice on these newer batteries is they have battery communication ports. On the old ones, they only had the RS-485 communication uh, here, so I'm not sure exactly how they um, they connected communication between every battery and then the inverter. Regardless, these LL batteries, the EG4 LLs, have battery communication between um, between them, so that is nice. We're gonna hook these up and connect these in. I'm just gonna go corner to corner, and then the same thing all the way down to keep it nice and pretty. And we have our negatives connected to the negative bus bar, our positives to the positive bus bar. And 
You want to torque these down to a specific, requires eight Newton meters of torque for all of these, but you want to be super careful because you don't want to strip out these copper bus bars on the sides. This battery, the top battery, will communicate with our inverters. And you want that, or those dip switches, that ID switch, to be down, 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 up. And that will, it'll tell you that in the manual, and that's on, 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 off. All the other ones can be whatever, as long as they're not that same thing. They have to have a different ID. But this one has to have that ID, the one that communicates with the inverters. So remember, always connect your batteries first to your off-grid inverters before you connect your PV. And I'll actually, actually show you something pretty cool that they did in the design that I thought was potentially a flaw, but it actually works out really well. So first, we've got our negatives to our negative bus bar using the provided cables. We've got our positives to the positive. We've got our battery cable that we made, our negative battery cable, up to our inverter and our positive to the positive. Now make sure all the poles are correct so you don't wanna cross anything over. Now here's what I was talking about with the design issue is that our PV input right here is in front of our positive battery terminal and I could not undo that nut without taking out the PV. Well, that's important on this off-grid uh, off inverter right here because you have to hook up your battery first. So. That's actually something cool. It's kind of a fail safe in the design. Okay, moment of truth. I'm gonna turn on our circuit breakers on our batteries. I'm gonna turn on number one first. No alarms, the BMS initialized. Everything's up on our LCD screen. I'm gonna turn on the second one, here we go. So those should be talking to one another. Everything's energized here. We can go flip on our grow watt inverter, the first one, because I haven't paralleled the other two together. We're just gonna get them going one at a time. Here we go, fingers crossed. I'm gonna flip on our grow watt inverter here. And you can hear it come on. Here we go. We've got our voltage, 52.1, from the batteries on this indicator here. I think it's working, guys. This is so exciting. Now, it just flipped over to house. So, it just flipped from battery, it detected it to the inverter. It's running 230 volts over to the house AC, but it's not going anywhere, remember. We haven't flipped on our breaker panel, so that's not going anywhere except into that breaker, which is off. So that would, if I did flip that breaker and I flip the one back in the, uh, the room back there, in our other room, we would be powering our house right now off of these two batteries. How exciting is that? Now remember, when you turn everything off, go in the reversal order. PV off, inverter off, batteries off. Now I did get the answer for grounding from Signature Solar and they do now recommend that you ground your inverters directly out to a grounding rod, not to your sub panel. Now the batteries also need, will need to be grounded and they come with a grounding screw and it says to ground them to the frame of the cabinet and then also out to a, a direct ground rod. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be combining all those out to a rod outside, leaving everything else grounded to our main panel from the sub, from the transformer and all that. And again, I'm gonna get electricians out there or armchair electricians are gonna say that's wrong. That's what the company's telling me to do, so that's what I'm gonna do. And when I had my friend over who is an electrician who wired up the main panel for me, he said everything was looking good, so. I'm gonna go with that. Now I'm gonna hook my PV wires into the inverter. They don't go anywhere. It's disconnected right here at the disconnect switch, and it's also disconnected at the panel. So these don't go anywhere but right there. So these are safe. Well, there you go. That's how you put that cabinet together, get the batteries connected, get everything up and running. Now, of course, we still have some other connections to make with communication and stuff like that. We'll be doing those in a future video. We'll also be doing the battery or the cables and all of that other stuff, but I just wanted to show you these awesome batteries. I'm so excited to have them. And like I said, they're gonna run out soon, so get over there and get some. If you have any questions, leave them for me in the comments section below. Now go check out this video right here, which talks about how much we spent on the entire thing. Have a great day. We love you. See you next time. Bye.